Praise the Lord. Good morning, Living Hope. It's time to worship the Lord. Happy Father's Day all to all the Living Hope fathers, all my brothers. Happy Father's Day. Uh, let me read a verse. Psalm 96, 1 through 4 says, it says, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Shew forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. He is to be feared above all gods. This verse one says, sing unto the Lord a new song. So literally, we're going to sing a new song this morning. <laughs> this song is kind of new to me. And uh, let's worship the Lord. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, okay. Change of plans. Change of plans. Well, well, good morning, Living Hope DC. Praise the Lord, Living Hope DC. And good morning we, to all of our visitors. Uh, welcome. Welcome home. Welcome back. Um, thank you for joining us today. And to all of our Facebook viewers, our live stream viewers, thank you for worshiping with us today. And once again, we just want to say happy Father's Day. We really appreciate you taking the time to worship and to uh, pray with us today. I just have one, one major announcement before we move forward with today's service. Um, it's a save the date. So all Living Hope DC ladies, all Living Hope DC ladies, save the date. On August 11th through the 13th, it's the annual Living Hope DC ladies retreat. Registration will soon open. And in can, amen. So it's a save the date. I'll give further details as we progress toward, but please save the date. And you'll have an opportunity to register. And can anybody tell me where you can register? Anybody have an idea? The Church Center app, amen. So all Living Hope DC ladies, please remember to mark the date. It's the Living Hope DC ladies retreat on August 11th through the 13th. And before we pursue with our worship service, we have a special presentation. So you may be seated. You may be seated. Praise the Lord, Living Hope. How's everyone doing? Um, happy Father's Day to all of the dads um, of Living Hope. There's so many of you here that, of course, I can name, but we don't have time for all that. Um, we want to obviously honor, on behalf of the Honorarium Committee, our pastor, who's also a father, a godly father. So, Pastor, you mind standing up? You can all stand. As many of y'all know, um, I lost my dad uh, a couple of years ago, and so that void, you can't replace it. But God always brings special people in your life that kind of appeases that void, and I have to admit that pastor is one of them. I'm going to share a quick, quick story. Um, when we were back in CLC, um, one service, we were leaving, and my car apparently had a flat. I didn't realize it at the time. I'm sorry, but I'm one of those, if the gas light is on, I'm still gonna truck through, um, just because. So I didn't notice it, and Jay was telling me, he's like, Mom, something's wrong with the car, we have to stop. And I said, I'm tired, you guys have to be at school, and it's too late, so I'm gonna just keep trucking. So unfortunately, uh, well actually, I'm sorry, back a little bit. We did stop to get food. So, you know, obviously I was like, okay, let me check to see if I see anything in the car. And if there is something, then I'll pull over. I looked and I didn't see anything, honestly. So I said, okay, must be some other noise or whatever. So I just kept going. My car was unraveling, the tire was not doing good. So once we got the food, I pulled over to the next exit 
and I called my insurance, obviously, and a tow truck company. Well, that service, um, some of you may remember, was pastor appreciation, and pastor had received a new phone. I just thought, I was literally just thinking about, you know, doing a little joke on him. I was like, hey, pastor, is your phone working? And so I decided to call him while I was stuck on the side of the road. And of course we were laughing about it. And then he said, Sister Key, are you okay? And I said, um, okay, pastor, yes, I'm fine. The boys are fine, but I'm stuck on the side of the road. Don't worry, I have a, my insurance company, everything's fine. And he's like, no, I'm not gonna let you stay out there. It's too late for you to be out there. And I said, pastor, everything's fine. Just trust me, I got it. And so long story short, I ended up saying, I said, okay, look, this is what I'll do. If my truck or my insurance, my, my, my tow trunk company doesn't come within 45 minutes to an hour, I will call you back if I need help. And he said, okay, but you better call me. I said, yes, don't worry. Well, 45 minutes came, no tow truck company. So I'm like, oh, I have to call pastor again. So I call him again. I said, pastor, I'm sorry. I hate to bother you, but tow truck company is not here. He said, don't, I don't want to hear anything else. I'm coming to get you. Let me know what your address is. So I gave him the address. Within like 10 minutes, pastor was there. And as soon as I got off the phone with him, my boys are starting to clap. <laughs> like, mom, thank God, pastor is coming. You can't do this by yourself. And I'm like, I know, but... I didn't want to bother him, you know, it was after church, I know he's tired, and as soon as he got there, he was quickly looking to see the tire, he was talking to the tow truck driver and dealing with everything, and at that moment, I stepped back and I saw him doing all of this, and I just, it was like a moment of time where God showed me this was how my daddy was. My dad took care of all my car situations, I never had to worry about it, and you know, when you don't have something, you miss it. And so I thank you, Pastor, because you probably didn't realize it, but I got to see my dad just for those few moments, and I really, really appreciated that. So. <laughs> Sorry, you all may be seated. <laughs> Kia and I didn't talk. But uh, I have a car story, too, with Pastor. <laughs> I borrowed his truck when I was, I just started to drive. And if you know me, man, I'm admitting this publicly, I'm not a good driver. <laughs> I took his truck, and I broke the side. I don't know if you remember. I broke the, um, the bumper on it. And so, and it was a Bible study night. And I came to Sister Linda's and Pastor's, and um, I wasn't speaking during Bible studies. I, f I didn't tell him that I broke his truck. I was hiding it. And, uh, and he knew something was wrong. You know, dads always know something is wrong. And so I, he waited until the end of the Bible study. He didn't embarrass me, and he said, what's wrong? <laughs> and I said... I am so sorry. And I was crying. And I said, I broke your truck. <laughs> and he said, he said, even if you trashed it, crashed it. He said, it is materialistic. It does not matter. And you know what he did? He went outside with me, popped it back and He said, it's fixed. <laughs> so he's taught me to keep the materialistic things material because those could be always replaced. He's always taught me to forgive quickly, love Jesus unconditionally, and most of all, don't miss the rapture. You know, um, we know, we know, we know the tree by its fruits, right? If an orange tree gives oranges, we know, oh, it's an orange tree, right? Um, I had the pleasure of beating your mom, but I've never had the pleasure of beating your dad. But if I did, I mean, if you resembled anything of you, I, I'm truly, truly blessed to know you today. You know, the word pastor, um, it's the first time me and my sisters have ever heard the word pastor um, in anything, right? So when pastor and sister Linda used to come, we always used to think pastor was his first name. And... Uh, 
we say the father and the sister are coming over. And, um, and we thought father was his title and pastor was his name. And he never had to, so anything that he did resembled the title pastor to us. You know, if he sang, okay, that's what the pastor did. If he walked, that's what the pastor did. But dad, the word dad, he had to erase what we knew and rebuild it. And that took time. Pastor really had to erase what we knew about a, a worldly dad and say, this is what a godly dad is supposed to do. And um, he had to reset a standard for a dad. Um, he always thought dads need to be close to their children and how important a father is in the family. Um, so I, I know there are so many dads here in this church and pastors, they are a reflection of you. And, um, and, and I know, you know, I, I love you very much. I know you do. I know you love me. And I just wanted to say happy Father's Day to one of the best fathers and probably the f best father I know. Well, you know, all those words, and I, I am thankful. And, you know, I never thought of, uh, it's not about being great. You, you know what I mean? It's, it's, we love one another, and we do what we're supposed to do because we love one another. I think if, Mar if my car broke down, I'd call Paulino. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Paulino, I'm picking on you a little bit. But I'm grateful, and certainly as I look around the room and the fathers that are here, I'm grateful for every one of you. And I watch you with your children. Uh, so precious, so wonderful. Uh, thank you for your kindness today. God bless you. And um, we do have some special things that are going to take place today. We pray that everyone will be blessed. we glad for Yaki's family that is here today. Amen. Amen. So, who do I give this to? We are? Okay. Well, we have um, a gift for all the dads. Uh, yeah, it's a, I think our theme is, what is it? Tip, hats off to dads. So, if all the dads will come, we have um, these, their hats. Each one has a different title on it. This one says, Three different titles, strong men, strong faith, strong families. <laughs> blessed, oh, blessed, and men of God, strong, faithful, and fearless. So we, we I, I guess you could just line up and come and we'll tip our hat to you. Please, yes, come on for the prince, yes. Baby is in the oven, but
before we head, I know this is a very long opening and intro, but it's decent and it's in order. Amen. Amen. Before we um, go into our worship service, we are going to ask our Bible quizzing coach, Sister Davy, to come up. She's got an awesome presentation to make today. Thank you. If I can have all the Bible quizzes up here. And I think Brother Sudat is going to help me. <laughs> All right. So um, thank you, Pastor and Sister Linda. We love you. Happy Father's Day to all the lovely fathers. Just know that you're important and you are loved. Sister um, Christine and I have been coaching the beginners this season. And Sudat has been uh, coaching the Intermediate Division with CLC. <laughs> I'm going to share a little bit about Bible quizzing and the quizzers today uh, because they won number one place in district finals. <laughs> Praise God. Um, so what I want to share today is the Bible says, for the word of God is alive and active. It's not dead. All right. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. That's in Hebrews 4.12. Psalms 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy what is a lamp to my feet? What is it? The word. So what is Bible quizzing? Bible quizzing is basically studying the word of God. It is memorizing the word. Every season, the book of concentration changes. As a beginner, you memorize the word by repetition. Like this season, the beginners ended at 192 verses from the book of Proverbs. <laughs> and Elijah, who's in the intermediate level, ended at 420 verses. And he... <laughs> and out of the 420, he was done with 410. So when you make it to the intermediate level, which is the senior level, you memorize and you interpret the word, you apply the word more, and it is super intense. So every season, the quizzers need to be committed, and they have to be consistent. The parents play a big part in helping the quizzers to keep up with the verses. Every tournament, they have to be at a minimum of 80% to play every tournament. But this year, we decided we were going to notch it up a bit and make it 90%. So the Bible verses study helps not only the quizzer. Now, this is very important. But it also helps the family. It becomes a family activity. Um, this season, the Flores family, the Clay family, um, and us, we worked very hard to stay at task. It wasn't easy. I want to share a bit about the quizzers. Caleb is our youngest quizzer this season. <laughs> he started when he was six years old last year, when he started the, the verses. And he has done well, and he's a team player. <laughs> Jelani is our quizzer number two. Let me tell you, let me tell you, he is all about winning. <laughs> he is competitive and he's focused. Sister Devika, how many points are we at? How many points? 60? 50? Oh, okay. That's Jelani. All right. 
Lance is our quizzer number one. <laughs> Y'all, he was recognized this season for the highest average score in our entire district. Okay? And Jelani and Lance are going to graduate to our junior division this coming next season. <laughs> Elijah was a part of CLC for this quiz season. They were, I have to say, CLC has been so loving, so kind, and he has had a great season with that team. <laughs> and his team ended at first in the entire district for the intermediate team. I want to end this by saying I am godly proud that the kids and their parents have done this. It's not easy. We know that God's word will never pass away, right? And my hope is that the word will be with them always. And one day, Jesus will tell them, well done. Right. Now I'm going to pass the mic along. Each of them will share one Bible verse from, from our beginners. And then Brother Sudath here, who has been studying with Elijah, I have honestly done nothing in that division. And it, it's intense. I don't even understand how to format the questions. And... He is extremely good at it, and he has done a really good job with Elijah. So I'm going to let Sudat do five, and then Elijah's going to end it with ten, okay? <laughs> so I'll, I'll start with quiz number three, which is Caleb. I want you to speak out like pastor does it, okay? All right. Proverbs 16, verse 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Jalani, quiz number two. Woo! Um, eight verse thirteen. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the fire not to hate. Lance, quiz number one. Woo! Proverbs chapter seventeen, verse nine. He that covers the transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth the matter suffereth very friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, I study verses with Elijah. I remember most of them, but the next day I don't, you know, revise, so I forget it. But since Pastor said it, look, I, I started, you know, memorizing some of them. So, uh, so I know it's Father's Day, but I'm going to start with ladies first. <laughs> so uh, 18, uh, Proverbs 18, 22 says, Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth for favor of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one goes to the ladies again. All right, so, uh, so, uh, uh, hold on. Uh, house, house and riches are the inheritance of fathers. But a prudent wife is from the Lord. So your wife is from the Lord. <laughs> All right. So uh, next three was, oh, that verse was uh, Proverbs chapter uh, 19, verse 14. So next three verses, I should not make any mistakes. Most of you know these verses. So it's uh, Proverbs chapter uh, 3, uh, 5, 6, 7. Uh, so trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Uh, uh, next one is, uh, in all, thine, all thy ways, acknowledge him, in he shall direct thy paths. And the next one is, be not wise in thine own eyes, and be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. And I'm going to give you one more uh, bonus one, which passes at five, but the uh, sixth one is, uh, 
22, uh, 22, 15. So, uh, so this is for the kids. <laughs> okay. So, foolish, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So, yeah. <laughs> There you go, you like that. Okay. Uh, huh, okay, so I'm going to be talking about the rod a bit. So, because the last verse, the bonus verse that he did is the rod. So I'm going to be talking about it a little bit. So, the rod is a pretty common thing that my well the house you would see it like you would pretty you would see it a lot <laughs> it, and i'm going to explain like why why is it here why 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 do i deserve this <laughs> so so proverbs chapter 23 verse 13 says withhold not correction from the child for if thou beatest him with the rod he shall not die <laughs> The Bible is telling that if you beat your child and if you're scared to do it, just don't worry, he won't die. Just, it's okay. <laughs> then, then we got um, the next verse, 14, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 14. It says, thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. <laughs> No, I mean, okay, <laughs> yeah, no, so there's some differences in the rod, so there's 22 verse 8, um, I'm not going to be saying the full thing, but I want to make some like connections, it says the rod of his anger, it shall fail, so if you're hitting for anger, it's going to fail, but <laughs> then we got 22 verse 15, it says the rod of correction, it will drive foolishness out of the child. So, then we're coming back to my verse. If you hit him for correction and discipline, it'll also deliver his soul from hell. So, yeah. Um, then we got 13 verse uh, 24, and that is, He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. So, yeah. So, um, if you don't, smack your son <laughs> you don't love him basically but if if you love him you would very like you would discipline very often so yeah <laughs> so then we got um, okay um let's do proverbs oh yeah 10 verse 12 Hatred stirreth up strives, but love covereth all sins. That's like what we need in this world right now, love. It's because it covers up all sins. Wow. <laughs> then we got 18 verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. <laughs> so now we know where James Wilson got his song from. So, yeah. <laughs> then we got, ooh, I like this one, 20 verse 1. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. <laughs> um, we got 20 verse 20. This one is also good. I know none of you would do this, but it's still good to know. Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamb shall be put out in obscure darkness. Yep. <laughs> Um, okay, this one is funny, but I'll just say it. <laughs> 9 verse 13, a foolish woman is clamorous, she is simple and knoweth nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I got two more verses. <laughs> then we got... Okay, this one is also a bit funny, because this is describing a fool very badly. Tw uh, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 23. 
Um, it is as sport for a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. <laughs> and then we got, um, oh, we got Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. So it says, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. So me and I and all these, like, um, yeah, pronouns, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, these are referring to, I'm pretty sure, wisdom or understanding. Like, it's referring to wisdom, I'm pretty sure. So if you seek wisdom early, you, you will find it. And if you love her, uh, like, love wisdom, wisdom will love you back. <laughs> it's like, yeah, pretty, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I think that's it. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm done um, with that. <laughs> Ten verses. Um, and if anyone would like to join Bible quizzing, just speak to my mom. It's very fun. It's super fun. I think Proverbs was the funnest chapter we have done so far. It was, it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's stressful to understand and stuff, but it is so cool. It's so fun. Thank you. <laughs> so as you can see from the word of God, we know that child abuse is not okay, but discipline is much recommended. Amen? Amen. So before we go into our offering, we wanted to remind you, one of the big reasons we did this is because we want to send our Bible quizzers to nationals this year. Everyone here? I know it just got real quiet. So it's good to give your offerings to the Lord because he gave them to you. But we, we're asking you to dig a little deeper today. And let's, let's send our kids to nationals. Pastor, did you want to say something about that? or Because I don't want to like, that's okay. So dig deeper. We need your help. Um, in addition to your tithes and offerings, there is on the Church Center app, there is a category for Bible quizzing offering. So make sure you dele delegate it to where you want it to go. Um, let's stand together. You've been sitting for a while. Let's stand together. We're going to pray over our offering and then we're going to head and we're going to start this worship service off with our worship of offering today. So I uh, just wanted to remind you, you can text to give, you can do cash or check, church center app. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, the card reader. We have a card reader. If you have plastic, it's in the back and our connections can help you. But let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have given to us exceedingly and abundantly above what we could possibly think or ask. Today, we're asking you to bless the giver as they return to your kingdom. And we pray that you would use our offering for the advancement of your kingdom in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our church, and in our city, in our world. In Jesus' name we pray, we give you all the praise and the glory. Now we're going to do a new song unto the Lord. There is no shadow that has ever come over your life. There is no fire that never stand against your mind. You're always been vita. Every battle you already won. You already won. There is no weapon that has ever that has ever left a mark on you. There is no army with the power. Truth. You're always been with us. Every battle you already won, we've already won. Show me one thing you can't do. Show me a mountain you can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough, and anything is possible. God of 
There is no kingdom that's advancing at the speed of light. Oh, and in his kingdom, every dead thing is bound to rise. A God, our Redeemer, he is faithful to revive. Oh, he will revive. Show me a mountain he can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough and anything is possible. Show me one thing that's true. Show me, Show me waters he can't put. He's the God of the breakthrough and anything is possible. It's possible. Sing this bridge. Here we go. All of my fears I will turn into praise. Shake off this veil as I sing out your name. A victory dance I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fears. All of my fears I will turn into praise. Yeah. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. Victory dance. A victory dance I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. Here we go. All of my fear I will turn into praise. Shake off. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance I will dance out in faith. I will, I will crush disappointment and break every chain. Sing, break, break every chain, break every chain. Here we go. Break every chain. Sing, break every chain. We will break every chain. We will break every chain. Break every, break every chain, break every chain. Show me one thing he can do. Show me a mountain he can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough, and anything is possible. Oh, oh. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me what else he can't part. He's the God of the breakthrough, and anything is possible. It's possible. Here's the fun run. All of my fear I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear I will turn into praise. Shake off, shake off despair as I sing out your name. Victory A victory dance I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear will turn into pain. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. 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 Show me. Show me one thing you can do. Show me a mountain he can't move. He's a God of the breakthrough. Anything is possible. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me waters he can't find. He's a God of the breakthrough. Anything is possible. It's possible. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah! How many of you know there's, that anything is possible? Amen? But how many of you know nothing is impossible for our God? Amen? I know it's so different. But let's begin to rejoice about nothing is impossible for our God. 
You 
Hallelujah. You know, we could never outdo our Father in heaven. Our fathers here on earth try to be like him. But you know, he never gives up on us. He never gives up. He's our way maker. He is there whenever we need him. He's as close as the mention of his name. Worship the Lord. It's been a long time. Worship the Lord with me. This is a song that touches my heart, and I know it will touch yours. In Jesus' name.
Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. How many of you have a situation where you can't see it? Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's your family. Your finances. You got something where you need God, the miracle worker, the way maker to move in your situation. Let's put our faith where our song is and let's expect Jesus to do what he's promised us today. Let's worship him for being our way maker. That even when I don't see it, he's working. And even when I don't feel it, he's working. He never stops. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, you're my God, that is who you are, you're the waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing it one more time. 
more time together. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence here today. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Without you, we can do nothing, God. We love you, Lord Jesus. We praise you. Amen. As Pastor has spoken earlier today, we're going to do things a little, little differently on this Father's Day. Amen. And uh, I want to ask those five men that were asked to be a part of this today to come on up. Amen. We've got a chair for each of you. Amen. These men, uh, Pastor felt inspired today to have these men come up. And we're going to ask a few questions of them. Um, they are godly men. They are men that the Holy Ghost, I believe, chose to come up here today. To speak to us, amen, and a little different. But God, I believe, is going to do something very powerful today. Amen. He's asked me to come up to ask these questions today. Which I'm honored to do. Can we just thank God for His presence here today? Can we thank God for His presence here today? Our Heavenly Father, Amen. Amen. Our Heavenly Father. There's a silly anointing oil on there, brother. Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, grateful for uh, for all the fathers here today. So needed. Amen. So we've got three questions we're going to ask everybody. Amen. And uh, what I will do is I will start, oh, my twin brother, Brother Jeremy, right here. Amen. Uh, you can tell we look alike. Amen. Same birthday. Um, so we are going to go through the line here. We'll go one question at a time. So I'm going to start by asking you, brother, just to introduce yourself, give your name, and then uh, the name of your children. Hi, I'm uh, Brother Jeremy, and uh, my kids are Caitlin, JJ, and Joshua. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you tell us um, how long you've been a dad and a little bit about how you've been raised? Uh, I've been a dad for 10 and a half years, and I was raised uh, in and out of the church. Um, and obviously, I've been back now for 12 years. So. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother Jason, I just introduced you. Do you mind introducing yourself again? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jason. And the uh, names of your children? Uh, names of my children is Sandra Nicole, Jesus Noel, and Lance Nathan. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so, Brother Jason, how long have you been a dad? I've been a dad for 20 years. All right, 20 years. Praise God. That's a generation. Amen. And can you tell us a little bit about how you were raised? Uh, I was raised Catholic all my life. And in the lineage of my family, I'm the only Pentecostal right now. All right. Praise God. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. These are apostolic men. These are powerful men up here. This is awesome. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Brother, introduce yourself, please. Uh, yeah, praise the Lord. Uh, I'm Brother Ashan, And I've, uh, I have three children, uh, Anna, Angela, and Azusa. And, uh, oh, yeah, how long I've have you been, been a, a father dad? for uh, six years? Amen. And uh, I was raised a Buddhist. Okay, amen. And hey, where were you raised? Were you raised in Sri Lanka? Uh, no, I was raised in the Middle East. Okay, in the Middle East. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Brother, your name and, and, and your children. Amen. My name is Soveni Nyandwi. Uh, uh, the name of my child is Blessing Away. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And how long have you been a dad? So I've been a dad for oh, eight, and eight years and four months. Very good. Very good. Praise God. We've got some experience up here. Amen. 
And can you tell me a little bit about how you were raised, Brother Sylvain? So I was raised in a very big family, 12. 12 people. So, and uh, I was uh, raised by a, uh, my family was a Catholic. So, and when I was 16, 17, I took my own decision to receive Jesus as my savior. All right, all right, all right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Brother. My name is Paulino Guzman, and uh, I have two daughters, which they are uh, Daniela and Vanessa. I have been dad since uh, 34 years. Wow, praise God. Uh, yes. I've been raised as a Catholic, but thank you, God, for everybody that pray, and they give me the opportunity to know the truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, so Brother Jeremy, I'm gonna, we're going to ask each of them unique questions. Amen. And feel free to you know, take a minute or two uh, to answer. But uh, Brother Jeremy, what blessings do you hope to bestow upon your children by raising them in the church? Well, that's a tough question, but it's not really a, it's an easy question. Uh, I pray for them to have the blessings of God yes. by going to church every Sunday and for them to get the Holy Ghost and be baptized. Um, and Caitlin, two weeks ago, she got the Holy Ghost, so that's awesome. So <laughs> prayer, prayer definitely works. And um, I just pray that they continue to be blessed. And yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, so Brother Jason, we've got a unique question for you. How do you balance meeting the spiritual needs of your children with the responsibilities of providing for them physically? I gave some thought for that question and it's very hard actually because right now because of my work it's always been about my work pastor knows about this I have been juggling work even on Sundays which is I not to my liking because I'm my own call nurse hopefully God changes this in a few days I can get a new job that will not give me an on-call every day or be off Saturday, Sunday. So um, to answer that question really is, for me, you have to really make your child be involved in church in an early age. So this particular scripture uh, that I looked up, which my wife used in the daycare is Proverbs 22, 6. Always train your child up the way that you go, and when they grow old, they will not depart from it. So it's never too young of an age of your child not to be involved in church or at least pray for them every day, daily prayer for your children. It's, it's hard not, your, not having your child not be in church. You have to get them involved. You know, I am, I'm not saying myself I'm not lucky. I am actually blessed because all of my children are involved in church. Yes. Oh, yeah. So that's, that is a blessing. You know, my daughter is involved in many ministries of the church. My two sons are in media or Bible quizzing, so I'm actually blessed. And that's all I can say. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we are, there's so much to say about these gentlemen, so blessed by their families and by them. Amen. So, Brother Ashawn, what do you do differently as a father who is a Christian than your dad did as a Buddhist father? Um, I'm just going to pick one. Uh, after coming to the Lord, you know, there are so many things that God has taught me. So I'm just going to pick one. Uh, one thing that in the Buddhist religion they teach you is that, um, you know, if you do good things, then you are inherently good, and that will offset your sin. And after coming to God, that we know that no, ma no matter what you do, you know, in this life, you will not cover your sin. Right? Yeah. So what I'm trying to teach them is that, uh, you know, when you, when you when you are walking with God, um, you you need to. Let, let me start over. Actually, um, so you know, I'm trying to teach them that we are not inherently good. Yeah. Uh, the Bible the Bible teaches us that we are not inherently good, and that there is no time in our life that we will not we will not need God because God the na the name of Jesus the blood of Jesus the only thing that will cover us in. So I'm trying to teach them, because they are young children, I'm trying to 
teach them that we are not inherently good and there is no time in our lives that we will not need Jesus to cover us in. Amen. So, amen. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost up here. Up here getting that out here, out there. Praise God. Very good. Amen. Brother Sylvain, how does the role of the Father in Rwanda differ than what you have observed in America? Well, uh, that's going to be a little tough uh, uh, to talk about, but uh, yeah, there are some similarities. Uh, fathers back in Rwanda love their children. Uh, few differences are that I think that's related to the culture. Uh, families lean, I mean, like the fathers lean more on uh, just working hard, spending more time trying to work to uh, provide for the family, but of course spend some time with the kids. Uh, but uh, here uh, it's a little bit different because uh, there is a, this sort of balance uh, between, I mean, of any responsibility between both parents. So that's something I found a little bit different. Uh, both parents take care of uh, children, which is great. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's great, yeah. Mm. So it was more central. The father was working a lot in Rwanda, is that it, as opposed to both of them here being more involved. Is that what I understand? Yes, uh, basically, the fathers tend to work hard sometimes they don't they have to go away so and uh, the mother is mostly the one who takes care of their family like children uh, doesn't mean that the fathers don't like their children it's just because that's how the character is but uh, uh, here it's a little bit different you know I mean probably because of the life here so both parents tend to participate in eco way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Brother Guzman, how has your parenting style changed since Jesus came into your life? A lot. <laughs> um, actually, I want to say just something. It's very hard um, in, the, in the life of the Christians to teach their kids. In my case, I was learning for my, for my two daughters and my wife because they were praying for me because I was uh, very hard to understand those, all those kind of things. And it did change a lot. Uh, it changed me a lot. Uh, I'm trying to be a good father as I can be. I'm not perfect. And but I'm trying to do the best, and um, I'm, I'm sure I'm still going to learn so many things that God uh, has for us, for everybody. But uh, it did change a lot for me. Yeah. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank God for our fathers up here. Praise God. All right, so the third question, and I will start with Brother Lib. The Bible says, he calls those things that be not as though they were. He calls those things that be not as though they were. What, can you speak blessing? Or, okay, so what would you speak over your children with that in mind? He calls those things that, that be not as though they were. What future blessings that you would, would you speak over them? Or what would you prophesy over them? that you would want for your children, knowing that what that word means is true. I, was, I totally lost my thought. Um, <clears throat> when I thought about this question, I, I thought about prophesying over having my kids not um, make the same mistakes that I made. So, yeah. Um, uh, <clears throat> when my, you know, Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Um, when my dad was still alive, he would pray over me when I had, my dad would pray over me when 
I was doing things that I wasn't supposed to be doing. And he, he prayed with me up until the very end. And when I came back to God, and, you know, I, I, I met my wife, I came back to the church, and then my dad passed on, but I think that prophesying over your kids is so important because, because you have to tell God what you really want, and my dad, somehow he knew what, what was going on, and he knew what was going on, and he knew that God was going to fix things, and God ended up fixing things. Yes. Sorry. No, no. God ended up fixing things, and then God gave me a beautiful wife and three kids. (laughs) It turned my life around. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, brother. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So always, always pray over your kids and don't stop and just keep going because God will tell you what they're, what they're going through. Yeah, that's so good, brother. And they can, God will fix it. Hallelujah. Fix everything. Amen. Amen. Yes, man. Hallelujah. Brother Jason, before you go, pray, put your hand on him, will you? Let's all reach towards Jeremy right now. Amen. Lord, we give you praise today. Lord, we love you, Father. Jesus, we pray for the Live family. We pray for Brother Jeremy, this mighty man of God. We worship you today, O God. Jesus, let the power of your spirit come upon him, Lord. And Lord Jesus, give him the words, God, to speak over his family every day, O God. And Lord Jesus, those things that he has just mentioned, O God. Hallelujah. Thank you for them, God. Let that come to all of us, fathers, Lord Jesus. That we would have a heart for our children. The book of Joel said that that uh, that the hearts of the fathers would be torn, turned towards their children. That the, the hearts of the children should be turned towards their fathers. Let that come right to, now to us, Father. In this day and age, God, especially right here, God, let our hearts be towards our children, God. And our children, tor- their hearts towards our fathers. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. That was awesome. That was awesome. Thank you. Very powerful. Amen. So, Brother Jason, the Bible, again, I'll repeat the question. The Bible says that he calls those things that be not as though they were. What would you speak over your family? Maybe future blessings to come to pass. Maybe who they are, their character. What would you say? Um, I would continue to tell them daily that they have to seek God first. Um, Matthew, I think that's in Matthew, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Also, tell them that, you know, school and work will always be there, but not, not to let them be blinded by the lustrous lies of the world. You know, you can always have Praise your Lord. Amen. Is that Brother Jason? Praise God. <laughs> you can always have monetarily increase, but the important increase is the increase in the kingdom of God. Yes. And if in the future, if they are asked by God to go, I am just their biological parent, father. But if God, the Heavenly Father, calls them, into something that is more greater than what they expect in their life, I will be glad to let them go. Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Praise you, God. You're doing something powerful here today, God. Let the power of your spirit, God, come upon these men. Let it come upon all of our fathers, oh God, here. Hallelujah, Lord. In a world, God, that worships money, God. Give us the heart, God, for the things of the kingdom. Lord Jesus, as he had quoted Matthew 6, 33, God, let us seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Everything will be added, O God. 
We thank you, God. We pray for Jason right now, Lord, as he's looking for that job, God. Let's pray right now. Hallelujah. That God would provide that job for him right now. Lord, that he would not be on call on Sundays, oh God. But you would give him his heart's desire that he would be here with his family, oh God, on Sundays, oh God. And Lord Jesus, we pray, Father, that that job, God, would surpass every expectation. Let's call those things which be not as though they were. Lord, in the name of Jesus, that that job would provide exceedingly abundantly above everything he could ask or think. Amen. That that job would give him a schedule. That it would allow him to be with his family in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Lord, that he would have rest in you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. We thank you, God. Can we just thank God for a moment right now? Hallelujah. As though he has, is doing it. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we praise you, God. We love you. Oh, Jesus loves you, man. Also, I want to add, sorry, brother. Yes, sir. You can always, like before, I was doing two jobs and being in church Saturday and Sunday on the basement church. It was so tiring. It's, you do job and church. But I was happier because you can always have less money and be happier serving God. Right now, I'm making more money. It's true. But it takes away my time with God and always a conversation with my wife. And of course, Brother also knows about this also that, you know, you can always have this monetarily increase. But that doesn't mean it gives increase like a Brother um, Pastor Eric knows about this. You can always be careful for what you ask for. You know, it doesn't mean that you, you have increase on in whatever you're thinking in your life or in, in your job. It, that doesn't mean that it gives the glory to God. And this has been always in my heart the past few months. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God's moving right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we praise you. God is moving. Brother Flores, and I believe that he's about to pour out that blessing upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Brother Sean, the Bible says that he calls those things that be not as though he were, or as though they were. What would you speak over your children? Um, I think uh, for me, it goes with what, what our brothers were talking uh, also. I just, I just uh, prophesied that they will be, uh, pr they will be children that pray. And that they will uh, grow in the knowledge of the word. So they, they know how to pray and what to pray for. Just, you know, that they will walk in the spirit. Lord Jesus, we just thank you, God, for Brother Sean Balasaria. We thank you, God. Oh, I feel your spirit, God. Your spirit is here, Jesus. These hearts, God, are towards their children, God. They're towards you. But they're, till, they're towards their children, God, the way you want them to be, Father. We pray right now for Brother Sean, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, not only give them the, the, uh, the words to speak, but also, God, he has delight in you, God. Lord, give him his heart's desires in the name of Jesus. As it is written, O God, delight thyself in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires, O God. And Lord, I know this man has desires, O God. I pray, Father, that you would give them to him. In Jesus' name. And they're coming. They're coming. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you want to say anything else? Uh, no, it's just God has revealed to me that if I had done this sooner, I would have saved myself a lot of heartache. You know, reached a lot more people. So that's why I prophesy with my children. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Powerful. Brother Sylvain, the same question. Uh, so in my life, uh, I have never experienced 
anything greater than having Jesus in my life. So with that reason, I would speak over my daughter uh, to live a godly life, walk with Jesus and stick with Jesus because through that, she, she's gonna get everything she would need and on the top of that, she will live eternal life. So the second thing I speak about my daughter is uh, to serve the Lord, uh, her name, her last name means for God, so, and we really meant it when we called her that name, because I remember when she was born uh, five weeks early, uh, the doctor told us uh, she has about 50% chance of living, you know, because uh, she had issues with the, 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 the umbilical cord was around her neck four times, and sometimes uh, her heartbeat was stopping for a minute. So there was no much hope with that, but God made her alive, so. Amen. And then one last thing I wanna say, I can say much, but I think this, what I'm saying, I really mean a lot. Uh, yeah. So another thing I would say uh, is that uh, when I talk to her, she always wished to be uh, to make a family in the future, uh, have children, and uh, also be a great mom. So I, I would speak that over her. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, hallelujah, Lord. We give you praise, oh God. We thank you for that family, God. We thank you, God, for those things that Brother Sylvain speaks over his daughter. So many times, God, we hear Lord Jesus Lord, when we see the mess in our world, parents spoke the wrong things, oh God. But Lord, we can expect blessing to have those things, hallelujah, as her father, the blessing of her father, hallelujah, spoke those things. She can look forward to those things by faith in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And Brother Guzman. Well, what I... What I want to say is that only God knows what they have for my daughters. But I always say he's in control. And you guys have to trust him a lot every day. I believe that he has for you guys so many things. I'm still learning. And uh, I know he has for me a lot of things that I don't know. But I'm going to trust him every day, every hour, no matter where I'm going to go. And I really appreciate it for all you praise, Pastor, for all my brothers and sisters here. Really, because that helps a lot, encouragement to everybody. And um, the only thing I would say is I'm going to trust in God and I'm going to follow his path. Praise the Lord. Yes. Jesus, your spirit is here, God. Oh, hallelujah. And Lord Jesus, we just pray over these men, God. We pray over all the fathers here, God. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for the hats that were given to us today, God. Strong men, oh God. Strong families, God. Faithful men, Lord Jesus. Lord, in this hour, God, let our hearts be solidified in your word, God. Let us be built up, Lord Jesus, in the faith, God, in a way, Lord, that this world will not waver us, O oh God. Lord, I pray for these men, Lord Jesus. We give you praise for them. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I'd, I'd like for all the fathers to stand. Uh, maybe, maybe I should even say, even for, I'd like all the men young men too to stand yes yes and um, I know we just prayed and you know uh, when we earlier in the week when we began to speak of doing this today um, I wasn't sure how it would turn out 
And I promise you, this is one of the most, in my estimation, one of the most powerful things we've ever done is to allow the men to speak. And they, rep they were a small representation of all the men that are here. But um, in conclusion of our service today, I'd like for us just to take a moment and to pray for every man. The young men that are growing up, we need to pray that God would help them to be strong men, men of faith. Uh, and we need to pray for the men that are now fathers to uh, impart the wisdom. I saw and felt the brokenness of fathers that were speaking here. And surely you could feel the desire that's in their heart for their children uh, to grow and to be strong. So would you join me in prayer as we pray for all of the men that are represented fathers in the future fathers in the present hello all of the men that are here to be strong men in their faith now lord jesus we thank you today i thank you for my uh, the ministry that i had vision vision take place here today as it touched the hearts of people i thank you for every man every boy that, Lord Jesus, I pray your Holy Spirit would rest upon them and protect them. Lord, I pray that you, will, Lord, would order their steps, guide them, and your, let your blessings be upon them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I guess to capsulate, I heard uh, good teaching from Elijah and Suda uh, about the rod. I felt the emotion and the passion of fathers as they were here expressing their hearts. And in conclusion, we had a great opportunity to spend a few moments talking to our Heavenly Father, asking His guidance and wisdom in our future steps. God bless you. And we say, um, have a great Father's Day. And we pray for God's blessings. Do pray for Living Hope, the church, that the Spirit of God will draw new people into the kingdom of God, that we will be here to love them when they walk in the doors and to help them find a place in Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Greet one another. And you're dismissed in the name of the Lord. For our home groups tonight, we just want to say happy Father's Day. Uh, there's going to be no home group check-in. Amen. Enjoy your families.